So, 99 films, who would have thunk it? I set up this channel to document an interesting year in Spitfire's development, and I said to the team, I'm not becoming a YouTuber, I'm not becoming a vlogger, and very instantly the channel's community that starts building guides you into the content it wants you to make so it's become something very unexpected and a total joy and I really thank you all for your support over the last well it's nearly a year now I think one of the highlights would be the library music film linked below the last film that I put up um, for my contribution to that is is minimal it's actually the comments below that I think form a more striking consensus and if you've not been looking at the comments beneath the films particularly for my monologues then you're really missing out because obviously my monologues are my point of view it's not until you see the general consensus either the support or or um, challenges to my assertions that I think can you really build a full picture if you will so in true spirit of this channel hi I'm Nikolai I'm a violinist turned violist but most of all, I'm one of those hopeless fools hoping to become a media composer way too late in life. Recently, I created my first sample library using just a single viola, slightly unusual articulations. And Chris has kindly asked me if perhaps I wanted to show you guys why I did it and how I did it. I did it mostly as an experiment to learn about sampling and to create something unusual, also out of curiosity. About a year ago, I recorded this particular articulation for a project I did. And I thought it would be way more convenient to have this as a sample library so I can go in and change notes after the fact if I change my mind. Also because of this. Because one of the quickest routes to you developing your own voice is to create your own sounds. It was recorded in a World War II bomb shelter in the centre of Copenhagen. Unfortunately, I can't show you more than this little time-lapse video which covers the recording of a single note. Because as you may have guessed, I'm no longer in Copenhagen. I'm here in Hanoi, my second home. But first, I need to get some lunch, and then I need to go buy something which you don't normally think about when you think viola and sampling. Here we go. 300. I'm not sure I have enough. I actually only need one. And now, back to the studio. Well, when I say studio, it's really just an empty room, but it will, in five months' time, become my studio. So this virtual instrument that I created consists of three different articulations, none of which requires a bow. There is a very soft layer of just kind of strumming pizzicato with two fingers. The second is just randomly timed pizzicato. And the third requires one of these. It's basically a conlendio, but played with a drumstick. And the nice thing about the drumstick is it bounces really well on its own. The other cool thing is that you get two pitches. You get the root note, but you also get the pitch where the stick is hitting the string. So I did a lot of this up and down to get as much chaos in there as possible. I intended for this to be scary and uh, I wanted to use it on a horror thing that I'm doing and it certainly can be if you get like a low drone going and then a cluster chord It's like a thousand spiders hatching But as a friend pointed out to me, it can also sound quite beautiful. Kind of like raindrops. I'm really pleased with how this turned out and I learned a ton about sampling from doing it. So uh, when I get back to Copenhagen, I'm planning on going back in the bunker and doing the whole thing properly, recording not just viola, but also bass, cello and violin, and uh, probably release it in contact. But until then, this, my first version, you can have for free. And I'm hoping some kind soul will help me port it over to contact so more people can enjoy it. There will be a link somewhere down below, 
And if you want to follow the process, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at the Steely Dane. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for that amazing film. And also, uh, I've been playing with the library, and it's a lot of fun. Everything linked below. So I've been working on my mega template, and for that, I needed four terabyte SSDs. So I bought two of these. One is going to be my traveling uh, drive. One is going to be my fixed drive. I've installed Carbon Copy Cloner on this machine. And basically, I'm going to suck all of the data off my traveling uh, drive onto this. And then back in the HQ, I have a spinning four terabyte drive. And that's the master drive. So just going to stick this in the box down below and transfer all of that data. Christian, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Good to see you. Morning, Up to now, what I've been doing is mainly using pedal boards. If you can understand the signal flow of a pedal board, mm -hmm. then you can understand the signal flow of a Euro Okay, so it's, great. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Okay. Um, I think quite often people can get a bit like, oh, uh, really complicated, and, it, and it's actually not. I mean, certainly if you can use Logic and Pro Tools, this yeah. is child's play in comparison. Okay, great really stuff. Simple. I guess what I've... You know, having gone to NAMM several times and going to all of the modular kind of tents and stuff, yeah. it's what I find is all I can hear is things going... Yeah. <laughs> the reason I was asking about your audio interface and yeah. your I.O. Um, is there are some really interesting ways of interfacing Eurorack system like this with your DAW. This is a USB audio interface oh, wow. for Eurorack. Now, it's not just audio. Audio and control voltage in a Eurorack system are the same voltage levels. Okay. Okay? So if you can generate a control voltage in your DAW, and there are plugins that allow you to do that, mm -hmm. then you can send a control voltage from your DAW okay. directly into your Eurorack system, and vice versa. If you send an audio rate signal from your DAW into your Eurorack system, then it's sample accurate. Okay, wow. So it's perfect timing. And control vo voltage can kind of dictate basically the tempo of... Tempo? Mm -hmm. You could open a filter wow. with a control voltage. You could um, create an LFO in your, in your DAW mm -hmm. and then send that LFO into your system. So this is the 4MS spectral multiband resonator. So you can hear there, we're fully resonant. Okay. There's no audio present. And what's happening is um, the white noise that's normal okay. and the filters are self oscillating. Wow! So that's the audio from the computer being routed through here. And it's now passing through the filter. There is more than enough in a system like this to make completed pieces of music. Okay. Um, if you want to make modular music that's gotcha. very, very easy. So this is inspired by the uh, Roland SH-101. This one. Okay. And this is really inspired by, uh, it was a modified version of a Roland System 100 sequencer. It's a eight step sequencer. Each step can have up to eight stages. Okay. So it, you can ratchet. Yeah, I've just got this on a minor scale, quantized a minor scale, and then five stages. And then this is like a, a complete synth voice. Okay. So it's an oscillator, noise generator, envelope, filter. Great. It's effectively it's, 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 it's not a clone of an XH101. It's heavily inspired. So, maths can do things other than affect incoming signals, it can also generate a signal. So, this channel of maths has a rise and it has a fall, and I can control the length of the rise and the length of the fall using those 
dial, so I can also control them using an external control voltage. Okay. So I'm generating a, like basically a very simple envelope. So every seven steps, it's generating an envelope that goes up like this and then falls down fast to change this control. So you can hear that, which is the tilt. I'd also suggest getting some random in your system. Okay. And for me, it doesn't get better than the uh, Make Noise Woggle Bug. Um, there is a new module that's just been launched, but we're awaiting its arrival, which is the Mutable Instruments Marbles. Airverb, SMR, Echophone. And it's probably also um, worthwhile having a think about like a, you know, a nice filter. Yeah, um, I've been looking at those. They, they, I can just, yeah, they, they look nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's got a tube. <laughs> look, must be, must be the right one. <laughs> so you can overdrive the tube. Brilliant. Excellent. Right, I'm going to switch those cameras off. Thanks for your voice. Let's You're do welcome. a bit of business. Thanks so much to Alex at Rubber Dub for his help. I've linked below two suggestions he's made for a starter system, which is kind of really exciting. The one thing I've kind of instantly learned about modular synthesis, it's kind of like wine. Now you can get good wine from your local supermarket, but to get the really good shit, you have to go to a really well-learned and well-connected wine merchant. You know, so it's like build a relationship with your local wine merchant. You go in one day and they go, listen, we've got a small consignment from this independent grower, which you should really check out. And I'm getting that vibe from Rubber Dub. You know, with modular synthesis, yes, there's mass-produced stuff, but there's also these kind of independent modular synthesizer manufacturers who do limited consignments. So I would encourage you, I'm not sponsored by them, they're not offering me any special deals or anything, but to look into small independent retailers like Rubber Dub when purchasing modular stuff. I've put the full conversation unedited linked below, as I also have done with Nikolai's video. There's a whole middle section that I cut out where he shows you how he constructed the sample instrument. Even though Spitfire's 10th anniversary year has drawn to a close, there's plenty more meat and taters in me yet with this vlog. The modular synth thing is part of what I'm experimenting with for my own personal sample library. And there's some other stuff that's coming up that's really, really exciting. So if you haven't yet, hit subscribe. And if you like what I do, hit like. And if you have subscribed and want to be notified when I put up something new, hit the little bell button too. Thanks ever so much for your support as always.